right, this is the Dales Report. We are from Miami, Florida. We're joined here with James Lanthier, CEO of Mindset Pharma. James, how's things? Things are great, Chad. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, and Joe Arujo, he's the Chief Scientific Officer of Mindset Pharma. Joe, good to see you. Great to see you too. How's uh, you guys enjoying the conference so far? Oh, it's great. You know, this whole industry sprang up really, you know, during COVID. So it's a great opportunity to finally meet yeah. people in, in person. Isn't it? Oh, it's it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's I know Zoom and everything has been great as far as the virtual aspect and being able to work online. And we've talked with yeah. a lot of number of CEOs, but it's been overwhelming as far as the response everybody just seeing face to face. It's like you've been doing business with people for 12, 18 months. And then finally, it's just like, oh, I thought you were taller, shorter, that sort of thing. But here yeah. we are face to face and get a lot of work done. So based off of that, which been, yeah, I guess, your takeaway on day one so far? I mean, just the, the level of interest that, uh, you know, we see, you know, really, you know, piling up in the space. Yeah. So many investors, so many bankers, everybody's excited about this Compass data that's coming out. I know, you know, this, the space is just, and it's already happening. It really is, uh, you know, it's it's on its way back up. So it's it's just the, the sheer number of people who are interested in these drugs, what they can do, how they can disrupt. Yeah. You know, the neuropsychiatry market, it's incredible. So you focus on second generation psychedelics. Yes. So if I'm new to this space, what does that mean? And I know what's the difference between first generation and second generation and why is it important? Yeah, so 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 the the best way to understand what a second generation drug is is first to define what a first generation drug of course, is, right? Yeah. So by first generation drugs what we mean are drugs like psilocybin, which is a psychoactive component of magic mushrooms, LSD, DMT, these are, um, you know, drugs that have been around for yeah. a long time, yeah. uh, you know, many decades. They've been, uh, they were really studied in the 20th century, kind of went uh, off limits for a while because of regulation, but have now really come back um, into, uh, you know, with a lot of research behind them. Yeah. What we're trying to do it's really simple. It's like this is the march of science. So, so we're trying to apply standard, you know, bio, best biotechnology practices to try to create new drugs that are better. That's it. We're trying to create new drugs that can deliver the same yep. therapeutic benefit as yep. these first generation drugs that we're all hearing about, but are either going to be safer, more predictable, have a more convenient duration. You know, um, we're trying to, to make better drugs. Joe, when, when James talks about safer, uh, more effective, uh, what is that, I don't want to say what does that mean, but how would that all work being the scientific officer and I guess being the brains behind obviously the research that's being done with the company? Yeah, I think I think what we have today is a real opportunity. People now understand there's, there's a medical advantage here and no different than let's say opium. We know yeah. opium saved countless of lives, dysentery, pain, but today, nobody is going out smoking opium. There's an opportunity to really create new drugs to change the space, and, and I think that that's what we're all trying to do here. Understand the first drugs and continue to develop the space and make even better drugs. Yeah. Well, what's really grabbed my interest with your company, and it's uh, turning out to be one of the true darlings. You know, you're talking to a lot of people right now, who do you like in the company? And your name gets brought up a lot uh, recently. Um, H.D. Wainwright provided coverage. Uh, Initial target of five dollars. Um, so I guess my question to you is, is that what was your feedback based off of that, and what should investors know, knowing that you're receiving a lot of coverage right now, and five five dollar price tag or in the current price right now um, is uh, very lucrative, obviously from an investment standpoint, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think what what the what that price target really speaks to is the the understanding that you know people on kind of the inside of the space have yeah. about where the real economic opportunity lies in psychedelic drugs. Okay. And, and, and really, you know, we're focused on second generation drugs, both, both because we can make better drugs, we okay. think, and we have some data to prove that out, but also because first generation drugs are all in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So they're not patentable. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for pharma to really put their you know sh uh, shoulder behind the wheel of the space right for real life science investors to come into the space they're only going to do so through drugs that have full patent protection yeah. they're, they're not going to come into the psychedelic space and, and start by competing against generic psilocybin of course so if you can you know number one make a better drug yeah and number two have patent protection 
that's incredibly valuable and that, that it really that's why really second generation drugs are, are where the big economic opportunity lies in psychedelics and, of course and that's that's the hence the five dollar price target you know because um because mindset really has led the way in first filing patents on yeah. new drug designs we've filed a whole range of patents on a whole comprehensive set of drug design strategies yeah and now developing data to show that you know we actually have at least on a preliminary basis drugs that are improved i want to understand this more so without divulging what exactly you do like how do you make better drugs and second generation drugs because what i'm seeing in two and two is that if you're kind of ahead of the competition when it comes to leading second generation drugs, Big Pharma is going to come in eventually in this space and potentially partnerships and buyouts. So actually, before we even ask the next question, what's your background, Joe, being the scientific officer? Yeah, so, so my background is in behavioral pharmacology and neuroscience. I've spent the last 20 years uh, managing, growing a, a contract research organization that okay. primarily helps other companies develop new drugs in the neuroscience space. So. What we do is we, we establish tests, models that are reliable, test uh, known drugs in them, and then compare new potential drugs against those to see where there's superiority, whether there's Can you give me an example? Um, well, I think the best example is with 1014, right? So what we've done, uh, and, and this is part of the co-program as well, what we've done is we've established uh, some, some very consistent types of tests with known drugs. So that's psilocybin, 5-methoxy, DMT, LSD, so we now have a data set. So we can then plug in anybody's drugs, including mindset drugs, into that into that sort of model and understand where they come out better. What we see with 1014 is both a, a, a stronger response in terms yeah. of, of 5-H2A response, serotonin 2A agonism, so we see that in a head twitch model, but we're also seeing safety improvements. So psilocybin at high doses reduces body temperature in mice. 1014 doesn't do that. Right. So we have a really clear understanding where 1014 differentiates from psilocybin, LSD, and other drugs. And we can continue to do that with new drugs. And this is really sort of the benefit of the yeah. code program. It establishes a okay. data set that you can continue to develop new drugs against, which is really important when you're trying to develop new drugs. If you do the work here, there, and in different locations, you're not comparing the same data. Right. You're not really comparing apples and apples. Tell me more about this co-program. Everybody I talk to in this space talks about what this is, uh, the importance of it all, and for those that don't obviously understand, why is this such a lucrative thing right now amongst people, people investing in your company, and uh, most importantly, the conversations that you're having with uh, you know various bankers, especially this week being in Miami. I think the po the co-program is really a catalyst for the entire space. So. By, by establishing data sets with known compounds. And remember, these compounds, there's a lot of data in people yeah. over the last you know, 10, 20, hundreds of years. There's very little preclinical data. So how, how does one go out and develop a better drug? We're just not gonna give it to people and right. ask them, is this better or not better? So we, we have to establish something that's objective, uh, something that's reproducible, and that's really what the co-program accomplishes. By, by generating pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamic data with known drugs like LSD and psilocybin, others can then come in and really understand how their drugs compare. And ideally, in an ideal world, we can understand how everybody's drugs compare against each other. So that way we can really understand yes. when, we, when we know this is the type of drug we need for this indication, we're going to have a data set that's well benchmarked, that's, that's standardized, that we can then pull from. And that's really the advantage of the code program. I want to touch on your animal study facility and owning something, a facility like that versus other companies that do not. What's that translate into as far as timeline? And most importantly, too, like, do you think companies out there understand like what they're doing substance wise? Are they doing things right versus wrong? And if so, like, what's your feedback based off of that? I think the first thing I'd say is th there's no one path forward to, to the right answer. Okay. Um, we don't own the research labs we work with, but we have very well uh, developed relationships. And okay. the relationship with Intervivo has been very helpful in getting data quick, uh, getting so? data consistently. At, at the end of the day, when you're developing new drugs, you need to get them into animals, you need to benchmark them, you need to understand pharmacokinetics, pharma, all, all of those things that yeah. I mentioned. The only, that's, that's essential in any drug development program. Um, because the space is new, because 
the legalities and the regulations around testing these drugs has been so challenging. Uh, there's very few places you can do that. So Intervivo is one. There's there's a handful of others. Ideally, what you want to do is is be able to to get the same to test your drugs in the same data set. Yeah. So you have a true standardized model. Yeah. Um, be, beyond that, you know, it's it's ultimately the the groups today don't need to go into animals uh, because there's so much data in humans. What they're missing out on, I That's think, is, is is how does that develop the future of the space and of sometimes you have to go backwards in order to go forwards yeah. and that's exactly what we're doing at Winston. We're developing that preclinical data so that we can develop better drugs and it's not just an experiment with somebody's friends as yeah. an example. Yeah, I hear you. We talked about the importance of the strong team. Joe obviously has got a big uh, strong background that was obviously uh, very self-explanatory. Um, you've got a $5 price tag. We talked off camera about Compass Pathways and their endpoints coming up the next week or two and how that will benefit the overall industry. So um, what's the message that you want to get through to investors as to why it makes sense to invest in you now given the, it appears, uh, a catalyst moment for this industry which is important. Uh, if you're a long-term investor, it gets a little stale within this industry, but I sure. do you not think we're at that point right now where we're going to see some movement? Chad, I absolutely do, I, you know, and, and I think that, um, you know, for mindset, really, if you can get to the realization that the big opportunity in psychedelic medication going forward is on yeah. is with next generation drugs yes which I can I can tell you you know based on the conversations that we have with you know a whole range of different strategics is what they believe then you know there really is it's not very you know Canadian of me to say but like at mindset we really have built like the premier next generation drug discovery platform yeah. I believe we have more you know next generation drug candidates yeah. than I think any other group that I've seen in the entire space and uh, and, and you know I think we're that's exceptionally hearing. well positioned yeah so when you're in Miami walking down the hallway to meet with these bankers what do you think is the biggest response and feedback that they give you when you're finished talking with them based on what you just outlined and everybody wants to work with us yeah it's great yeah yeah important to understand that when making an investment decision great leadership team and most importantly too second generation drugs are a way of the future within this industry and why mindset right now has you know received a lot of coverage from a lot of institutions in new york james joe appreciate the time thank you so thanks. much Ed. all right thank you thanks guys